Those of you who've uh, just joined us on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, or YouTube, wherever you are, uh, we want to warmly welcome you. And um, for those of you who just saw the notification and you're not sure what this is about, we're talking, of course, about Immunization Agenda 2030. Um, and today um, is a lightning chat um, about home-based vaccination uh, records. So home-based records and vaccination cards, a very important topic indeed, and we'll be talking about this topic now and in the future in just under four minutes uh, we have with us Laura Niclo Klein from the World Health Organization if you're following these lightning chats you have uh, enjoyed um, and been in her company uh, before and uh, Rich Radka uh, the colleague she has invited she'll introduce him and we uh, when we get started but for now uh, please uh, do introduce yourselves uh, let us know what city and country you are connecting from uh, and we have actually um, let's see this is uh, Olu Bukola Soji Taiwo who says hello everyone and a warm welcome to you um, and look forward to seeing you in just over three minutes I'll see you soon Back to Saidu uh, Dahiru Dogua, who's uh, joining us on uh, YouTube, uh, Emmanuel, Marwo, Kamlan, and many others. A warm welcome to you. We'll see you in just under two minutes. <laughs> It's always a pleasure to see Rajat Garg from India, who says hello, everyone. Uh, Rajat, good to have you. Also, Emmanuel Demby from Sierra Leone, uh, who says it's a pleasure joining the team of expertise. That's a nice way to put it, uh, Emmanuel. We'll see you in a minute and 30 seconds. <laughs>
another warm welcome. Uh, we're here for a lightning chat. This is one in the series. These are 15-minute talks in which um, Charlotte is uh, going to ask questions of our guest today, Laura Nicklaclain, and she's going to introduce Rich Radka uh, to us. Uh, rapid fire Q&A. Charlotte will ask the first uh, questions and then we'll look to your questions. Uh, Subhendu Ray says, a very interesting topic is going to be discussed. Immunization records are often a big challenge in migrant populations. Uh, Subhendu, we look forward to your uh, contribution on this topic with us in our Zoom uh, studio our number of participants in the WHO Scholar Level 1 certification course about the immunization agenda. So this is the roadmap for the decade uh, to guide all immunization professionals everywhere uh, towards achieving the goals for of uh, immunization set and agreed to by the world's uh, countries. Um, I'm going to now go to Charlotte. Charlotte, how are you doing? And then let's kick off, dive right into it. Hi, Reda. Hi, everyone. I'm doing great and warm welcome to you all. Uh, glad to have you with us today, Laura and Rich. So we are going to start first and foremost uh, uh, with you, Laura. It's always a pleasure to listen to you. Uh, you introduce yourself once again for those who are joining for the very first time. And then we'll turn to us, Rich, to also introduce themselves. And then we'll go straight to the questions. Laura, you're muted. Please unmute. There we go. Yeah, the, I had to be unmuted. But anyway, thanks, Charlotte, and great for um, grateful to have this opportunity to talk today about home base records. So, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Lauren McLaughlin. I work here in Geneva on a grey and cold day here in Geneva. Um, in the immunization department, working on life course and integration. And um, I've been discussing a number of topics over the past couple of lightning chats. I'm very happy to have my colleague Rich join me. So I'll pass over to Rich to introduce himself. Hi, all. Um, thanks for having me. Uh, my name is Rich Radka. I'm based in Barcelona. And I come from outside the world of immunization, outside of the world of public health, actually. I am a uh, user-centered design expert. And I focus on uh, bringing users into the process of designing both products, physical goods, records, as well as services and processes. Um, I've been working um, uh, for a few years on home-based records for immunization as well as for mother, newborn, child health. And um, I'm currently working with Laura and uh, her colleague Annie on uh, a implementation guide um, for home-based records that we'll talk a little bit about later on in this call. Thank you very much. So, Laura, my first question is to you. What is a home-based vaccination record and why is it important in immunization? So, a home-based record, uh, otherwise known as a vaccination card, or as Rich said, a maternal child health booklet. There are actually a couple of names and it's not a straightforward definition. But uh, if you want to summarize it, it's, it's, a, it's a medical document that is issued by a health authority, either at the national, provincial or district uh, level in which an individual's history of receiving health interventions is recorded by a healthcare provider. And this document is kept with that individual. So either the, the caregiver or the person themselves who received those interventions, they hold on to this booklet um, or record and they bring it to every health contact um, each time that they're going for services. That is the ideal situation, but unfortunately we know that sometimes um, people don't often remember these records. But also um, over time, we know that these um, records can get lost or misplaced or damaged. So they should be normally provided by for free by, by the uh, health authority and they should be replaced if they're lost or damaged. And in terms of importance for, for immunization, we're very, very, very reliant on home-based records um, for knowing the number of doses that children have received or, or mothers or, or adolescents, but we're also very keen to not only at the health facility level, but also when coverage surveys are carried out um, or other household surveys, the home-based record is a key indicator that we use to look at whether or not people have received all the doses um, that they need. And we're learning that immunization is one of the, the programs that is the most reliant on this, on this record. That's why we place a huge amount of importance on it. And what we find from a lot of work that we do is that the 
retention of these home based records actually can be quite low in many countries, whereby for, for some countries we see that when a survey is done, as little as 30% of the population have a card available when they're doing household survey. So um, considering how important they are, this is why uh, we, we want to try and see how we can work better to strengthen implementation of these home based records, which is the, the work that Rich is helping us with. But as part of also the strategic priority four of IA 2030, uh, we, we include home based records in life course and integration because when we think about how we want to see people being followed across the life course, uh, having a record showing that continuum of care is really important. And then from an integration aspect, what other health interventions can be delivered and recorded on a home-based record so that we can keep track of all the other health interventions that are there. So it's not a straightforward topic um, to, to explain or describe, but I mean, at the country level, everyone knows that these are super important um, and we, we see that there are often challenges. Uh, thank you very much, um, Laura, for that answer. We already have three hands raised in the room, but I'm going to take this uh, a second question and then we'll turn to uh, those who are with us here in the Zoom room to listen to them. So uh, in some contexts, new vaccines are introduced when vaccination cards have not yet been revised to carry them. What can be done to ensure that there are no data gaps between uh, the facility-based records and home-based records as a result of this. So I'll just touch on this briefly and then I'll pass it over to Rich. But I think um, you're looking at somebody who has probably looked at, I don't know how many thousand home-based records, because as part of our missed opportunities of vaccination assessments, we take photos of the cards. So we review these and we see how information is being entered. And oftentimes we'll see that when a vaccine, a new vaccine is introduced and a card hasn't been updated, there are sometimes fields on the home base record which allow for the health workers to add that new vaccine. However, we see that sometimes these are recorded in the wrong area, which means that when someone comes to do a survey, they may not understand what's going on. So this goes back to the point about ensuring that there's a good collaboration and design um, to ensure that when new vaccines are introduced, that, that there's updating, but also from the health facility register point of view, we also see that these are not updated. So a lot of health workers have to be very, very creative. And I've seen lots of creativity when I'm reviewing these cards. Um, but that's one of the challenges um, that we face and leads to underreporting or underreporting sometimes of some vaccines. But Rich, over to you. Um, yeah, thanks, Laura. Um, yeah, I think this brings up one of the, the reasons to take a user-centered approach when designing and implementing the cards, because there are really three types of users that we're interested in. The primary uh, user type that we often think about is the mother or the caregiver or the family, which, of course, is extremely important. But there's two other types of users as well. There's the health worker themselves. Um, whether that is someone in a facility, a visitor, someone in the field. And for that person, um, is the card actually usable? Does it give them room to write in something if a new vaccine has been um, introduced since the last time this card was revised? So um, making sure that we're thinking ahead and thinking about how a health worker is going to really use this so that they can be correct and complete in the the recording of the vaccinations for a particular individual. And then finally, the, the third type of user is the administrative user, the healthcare administration, whether that is HIS or if that is um, a facility manager, et cetera, to make sure that the processes used in that facility fit with uh, the actual design of the card. Uh, and when we talk about that admin user, uh, especially uh, around HIS, they should be a stakeholder involved in designing the card to think about how will this work? How do we not have redundancy or how do we have pl planned redundancy if, if, if we need that to make sure that the record is um, transferred from that home, home base record to another physical or digital um, format as, as needed. So really important to include the users in the way we design these things. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Reda. Yes, uh, Charlotte. So we've got um, we've got a, yeah more introductions um, from Jemima, for example, from Ghana. I've been sharing most of those on screen, and then uh, we're starting to receive comments. So remember, this is about your comments and questions. You're directly you have an immediate connection to uh, two global experts. Um, 
um, Lauren Nicklin is from the World Health Organization. Uh, Ahmad Navid uh, Nusrat is uh, from Pakistan. Aliyu Daniel Ibrahim from Nigeria is glad to be part of this program. Um, Ismail Aydego is an independent uh, consultant joining from Nigeria. And then Rajat um, had uh, responded to Subhandu's point um, about immunization records, a, a big challenge in migrant populations, and um, has this comment, if a plastic packet is given to keep the card, then the records may have less chances of uh, damage. It sounds like there's considerable uh, uh, practical <laughs> experience uh, and expertise. Ahmad Faisal says uh, it's also called a weight card um, in his country. Uh, so that's mm -hmm. what we've got for now. But I know we have uh, four hands uh, raised in our uh, Zoom studio, Charlotte. Uh, thank you uh, so much, Reda. And uh, before I turn towards uh, Dr. Subendu Kumare uh, uh, to intervene, uh, there's this comment on the chat from Daiwo Iwot from Nigeria. I say to get to the point of home-based immunization records, it is important to organize communities in clusters and link them to public, public health facilities nearest to them. Number households and serials, serially and place home-based records, including immunization cards, according to linked facility cards. By doing all these, it is easy to track a, a client. So it sounds a little bit complex, but I see you nodding. Laura, makes sense to you? It does, Yeah, and I think that what, what, what we would love to see is a link between the home-based record and birth registration, because not only do we have an issue uh, sometimes with retention of home-based record, but we also know that when we come to try and understand what our denominator is for trying to know what our target populations are, that often is very hard to, to determine in many countries. So we know that children are vaccinated at birth. Uh, we know that they're given a card. If there was some way to link this so that we could um, keep, you know, keep track and, and know where these people are, that'd be great. But also it would also help hugely in terms of understanding what is our population sizes. So. Okay, uh, thank you, Laura. Dr. Subendu Kumare, please, uh, can you introduce yourself and share with us uh, what you have in mind, question or concerns concerning home-based records? Over to you. Hello, uh, hello, madam. Uh, myself, Dr. Subendu, uh, working from World Health Organization in the northern part of the Bengal and looking after Sikkim state. In India, what practice we have, we are issuing the card to the pregnant mother the same card after the delivery, that same card is utilized as the immunization record. We call it the MCPC card, the mother and child protection card. The, the issue of what I have identified that the in case of the migrant populations and in case of the home delivery, where the delivery is not taking place in the institution, these uh, mothers are lacking the immunization cards. So at that time, from the history or other parts, some, uh, some kind of a record or some kind of uh, assumption is made regarding the immunization and some immunization are provided but no documentation is provided to the mothers so that in future when the uh, migrants mig uh, migrate from one place to another again the same story going to repeat so to me to solve this problem now the uh, this digital era if some kind of application is used by the vaccinator based on the mobile number because nowadays at least a mobile is available with each and every one so if the some person is registered with the mobile number from the maybe from the antenatal period so that the on searching the mobile record the proper documentation can be received from the child so the child can be provided the proper due dose and again the mcpc card although the documentation it records uh, mother's documents and the child's documents the uh, growth chart many things are incorporated so, so it becomes quite a bit heavy so for that reason that big document preservation sometimes may be difficult for the uh, many of the mothers so it can be make a little bit simpler thank you uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Subendu Kumare. Um, and uh, your preoccupation, even the solution you propose, is in line with the next question that I had for La uh, Laura and Rich. So I'll just read it out and then I'll turn towards you, Rich, and then to uh, uh, Laura. That is, it's uh, at a time when the world relies more and more on digital technology. Can we, in the nearest future, envisage the use of electronic home based records? What will that entail? So uh, we'll start with Rich and then Laura. 
Thanks. Um, I think um, much like the the cards, um, as um, the doctor just mentioned, the situation in each country is quite different, uh, both in terms of the needs of, of a physical card as well as the needs or the possibility of a digital card. Um, I know that it, digital is a very exciting topic, but in many countries, we may not have the access to the smartphone uh, necessary. Um, if a family only has one smartphone and uh, the husband may be the prime uh, money earner and goes out of the house with that smartphone, then there goes that record with him and the primary caregiver being, being the mother may not have that card with her. So that we have some uh, barriers there. Um, on the other hand, we also meet, need to make sure that not only do our caregivers and families have access to that digital card, that also the health information systems are fully integrated. So we're getting value out of it that they, we have the uh, preparation in place. Is the Ministry of Health really prepared to integrate digital cards into uh, their current uh, status? And I think if the answer on both the parent side and the home uh, user side is yes, then fantastic, because obviously we can reach many people. We don't have as many issues with replicating data or making sure the data follows an individual over many years, retention and damage and things like that. So really each country has to make some strong decisions about are they ready for it and how might they add digital or use digital as their primary card. Okay, uh, Laura? Anything yeah, I think I think Rich um, has made you know, very valid points, and I think we're at a point in time. <laughs> let's of course, this is recorded, so we'll know. But um, in the future, I think we're going to, in the next potentially five, ten, fifteen years, uh, we're going to see paper-based records disappearing slowly. So, but still, that that doesn't um, stop the the issue that we're currently facing, where um, we are reliant on, on paper-based and what we see is that in many countries, people either don't have access to them or the country itself doesn't have access because we have reports on, a, on an annual basis through our joint reporting form that upwards of 70 reports over the past six years of, of countries that have had national level stock out, which means that they haven't been able to provide um, home-based records from the national level. Uh, they're having stock outs because either the countries can't finance them or that there's been an issue with supply. And Dr. Kumar Ray brought up a very good point in that some of these booklets are quite big. And um, as some of the work that we're trying to do um, with this uh, work to try and strengthen implementation of home-based records is understand, is there really a need for all this information in the home-based record and what information is used? Now, if we had a more digital platform that potentially could help streamline the process, and at the current at the moment with COVID-19 vaccination, we're seeing so much advancement happening with the potential for a digital card um, for COVID-19 vaccination. It's just unfortunate that people weren't trying to make the same efforts with all our other health interventions that we currently have. But I think this is something that we're seeing when COVID-19 or a disease affects the whole world, then people start to have more innovative ideas. But when there are some issues in, in certain parts of the world, it doesn't seem to be something that uh, sparks a lot of interest. So let's see what happens over the next couple of years, particularly with the advancements that's happening with COVID-19 vaccination. And hopefully with time, we will see um, a move more into the digital era. And as Rich said, that is linked with the health facilities so that everything can be um, properly connected so that not only can we ensure that there's good linkage, but also that it's also good follow-up. Thank you. And uh, this has uh, ignited uh, some discussions here on the chat, but I'll first of all turn towards Reda to see uh, what is coming as uh, messages or comments or questions on Facebook. Indeed, there's a, there's a lively discussion sparked on, the, <laughs> on the Facebook, so let me pull in. They're quite uh, detailed comments. I'm going to try to show them on the screen, but we'll also read them um, in case you're on your phone and can't, can't read the text. So uh, Rajat says, in India, immunization card contains a lot of information regarding child, like the age of weaning, developmental milestones. If the beneficiary is told how to utilize it and its importance, then it 
it will be kept, according to Rajat, safely by the caregivers. Uh, Ismail mm-hmm. Aydego uh, does have a question. He wants to know how to bridge the following difficulty. Um, and this comment I'm going to try to summarize. Um, so he is from Nigeria. Most settlements are clustered as catchment areas to health facilities closer to them for easier tracking. Uh, however, there are cases where even though facilities are closer to some settlements, caregivers still prefer to access facilities farther to them or private health facilities not close to them, thereby making tracking cumbersome, not forgetting the migrant communities. What can be done to bridge this difficulty? Amel Eltahir has a comment. Uh, digital card is really helpful and easy to carry in the uh, uh, Kingdom of Saudi Arabia for COVID-19 vaccine. Digital card is used on mobile app, having COVID-19 test results appointment to do the test. Uh, Mohammed um, Inuwa Wadas is good day, uh, and he's just wa- he just wants to let us know he's watching from Karagum LGA in Bauchi State uh, in Nigeria. One last comment, Ismaila uh, Edego, um, who adds, digital cards may not be feasible in many developing countries, as many caregivers are poor and do not have smartphones, plus most remote areas do not even have good network coverage to begin with. So digital home records may be a thing of the future in those areas or can only be adopted in areas with peculiar differences. I realize there's a lot there uh, for our guests and there are many more comments and hands raised in the room. This is the principle of the lightning chat. It's 15 minutes, but if you're still here, if you if there's still questions in the room, that means there is a thirst to know more. And I'll tell you at the end how you can, in fact, find out more. Back to you, Charlotte. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Reda. So uh, right now I'm going to turn to uh, to listen to one more person, but I'm sure uh, Rich and Laura, you have listened to all the comments and you may want to say a word or two about that later. But I really want to turn towards uh, Emmanuel Nyale, whose hand has been raised for quite a while now. Uh, Emmanuel, uh, please uh, uh, introduce yourself and go ahead. Yeah, good afternoon, good morning, and good evening. And uh, I am Emmanuel Nyali, working with the Ministry of Health and in partnership with uh, Perifica Health Unit. And uh, my question here is, especially those we are living in this, um, um, let me see, 21 centuries, without actually these home vaccination cards here, because in our own setting, um, for example, when um, mothers are here for vaccination we give them card which is on the five card from the ministry of health after this mother taking these cards home um on returning on this with these cards the card actually become damaged false and even they cannot even give record of this card so in this area of this model technology in which way we actually in which way can we do so as to track these missing cards from this mother Okay, uh, uh, thank you very much, Emmanuel. So, Laura, w- if the cards get missing or damaged, what happens? What can be done? So, um, thanks, Emmanuel. And I don't know where you're calling from, but I think you're you're from Nigeria. Nigeria, you're very good. Sierra Leone. Okay, oh, Sierra Leone. Sierra Leone. Yeah. Okay. okay, very good. Um, so, um, I understand that um, there are issues with many countries with cards being damaged. Now that actually is part in place because the the design of the card is not ideal for the for the setting because we know that there are rainy seasons, it's humid, so sometimes the cards can disintegrate. So what we see in some countries is that, as mentioned earlier, is that they provide a cover to keep the card safe. Um, but also, I've seen in some countries that the caregivers are really. Um, cancelled when they're given the card to keep the card in a safe place, to keep it in a dry area and to bring it to every health contact. And that's something that I want to emphasize very strongly in this call is that um, one of the things we're seeing in, in, in many of our, in a lot of our work is that people are coming to health facilities, accessing services, but they don't have the card sometimes. So they're not screened. So they don't receive the health intervention and they leave then without getting vaccination or other um, health interventions. So it's a theme that I I talk about a lot in in my work because I work on missed opportunities for vaccination, but also from the integration point of view, also when there is potential for someone to receive these interventions, we have to think about how we can get them, um, yeah, accessing services and getting the services they deserve. So so the first point is that it it has got to do with the card design. So if you're seeing that in your country, a lot of cards are disintegrating or um, getting damaged, there may be a need to think about how can you um, think about 
new processes or, or new in type of interventions that could potentially have more longevity in the card, but also getting the health workers to counsel the mothers to keep the card in a safe, dry place and to bring it to every health contact. But then what happens when someone loses the card? This is where the link with the health facility registry is so important, because if somebody loses a card, they should have that card replaced and information from the health facility registry should be re-entered into that home-based record or, or vaccination card so that that person, when they come for their following visit, that they will have um, all the information that the health worker will need. And in many countries, a lot of this information is required for school entry. So children would be required to bring this card on the first day of school or before that so that they can screen and ensure that the child is caught up. Because if we don't make sure that people have the correct documentation, either what can happen is that, um, as was mentioned earlier, an assumption can be made that the person received the vaccines, so they don't get anything, or the assumption can be made that they didn't get any and they will receive more vaccine. So this is this is the, the balance and the, this is why this record is so important because we can it can lead to over or under vaccination. Um, and then really at the end of the day, then when we want to try and do a survey to see what proportion of the population are protected from certain vaccines, if there's no card, then we're going to be, um, yeah, uh, we're going to have challenges. So that's why it's very important. So I think if a card is getting damaged, you need to revisit what can be done to, to improve the quality of the card. And then if you want to track people, then you need to be able to assure that if they do lose a card, that the, they're given a new card and that they are um, card is updated and that they're reminded to keep it in a safe place. I know Rich, do to add anything further? Um, maybe just two points. One is, again, uh, from a retention perspective and a protecting that perspective, if we can demonstrate how important and the value of that card is as well. Um, and then the second is around materials. There are waterproof and tearproof papers that are considerably more expensive than normal paper, but in certain s situations, perhaps with uh, with areas or populations we know are at risk, environmental risks of damage or 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 this kind of thing, that we can spend that money because it may save money in additional vaccines or or uh, missed opportunities in other ways. Okay, uh, thank you, Rich. Lots of comments here in the chat, but there's one that catches my attention from Ahmed Fezal. He says, we used to keep a copy of the same card in the health center. Mm -hmm. So even if mother's card is damaged, we can still issue a copy. So uh, we have less than five minutes before the end of the session. And uh, I have uh, Mohammed Imran Qureshi that says he wants to share a success story. So I'm sure we'll be having some lessons to learn uh, from there. Over to you, Mohammed. Uh, thank you very much, Alert. Uh, from Pakistan, let me share a few of the success stories. You know, card retention is always a big challenge, but uh, this challenge at times deprives the child for a right to get uh, subsequent vaccination. The reason behind, I have seen myself, they were, clients were visiting to the health facilities and they were being refused that you don't have your vaccination card and we don't know which vaccination uh, to be given on this particular day because the child belongs to some other area and visiting to some other health facility which don't have their uh, previous record for vaccination. So this is really, I uh, mean, the devastating situation for the families. But, uh, uh, you know, a lot has already been said regarding the card jacket. We have already did that in Pakistan and it has a definite results. The, the, apart from that, another uh, innovation which we did, basically we developed a green book. Green Book was a family book uh, which contains the immunization record of the, of, the, uh, of the mother with regards to the TT vaccination and all of the, 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 the children of that particular mother are already uh, included in that Green Book. So keeping one book instead of four or five cards is really easier for the family and it improves the card retention. But uh, we also uh, used two more innovations uh, in our different parts of uh, the country. One was the barcoding. So we already started barcoding uh, on the uh, home best records, the vaccination card, as well as uh, the barcode with the, with the particular record of the child. So we can just uh, uh, like scan for the barcode and we can retrieve the, all of the inf uh, information and do the subsequent vaccination. Last but not the least is the most important innovation in the use of technology, which is the NFC card. 
basically this nfc is a, a small chip which stores the data a small set of data is stored in in that particular chip it's just like a cellular mobile handphone uh, uh, sort of a sim card chip and it is being uh, inserted in the immunization card so once this uh, chip is there if you touch this uh, like uh, chip card with your mobile you can retrieve all the information of the immunization of that particular child and do the subsequent vaccination so these are some of the success stories which are like uh, improving uh, home based record and card retention in pakistan but nevertheless still a lot of ground to cover i would uh, lastly also add that uh, counseling is really important and if you counsel uh, properly uh, what is the significance and importance of this card you can better retain the card by the families and uh, another thing was uh, like putting the growth uh, growth chart and a uh, few of uh, deworming uh, vitamin supplementation things on the on the card that also gives a value addition to the card and it explains to the mother that you can like uh, uh, also avail these opportunities for the health of the child over thank you very much uh, for that experience mohammed and shravat you so, have one last question which is the ia 2030 question right i realize we're over time apologies for that but we it was really interesting to listen to this practical experiences and the expertise from our guests so what is the ia 2030 question Thank you. Yes, Reda. How will improving the retention of home based records contribute to the achievement of the IA 2030 goals? What does success look like in this domain by the year 2030? Laura okay. and then uh, Rich. Okay, thanks Charlotte. So I think it all kind of falls into place I suppose the themes we've been talking about, but I think from a coverage and equity point of view and also thinking about um big discussions that are happening around zero dose children and all those children who are under or unimmunized if we have good retention of home based records we can know who are being missed and uh, what they need to be caught up on and i think that the home based record from particularly from our missed opportunities for vaccination assessment and um, studies we know that a huge proportion of children are missed because they didn't have a card with them on the day of the health facility visit So if we can instill that people have a home based record that it's uh, retained safely uh, I think there can be massive gains made in immunization coverage and also in other health interventions so that is really I think one of the, the key things that is really important for the next decade and who knows what will happen over the next decade whether we will still see this paper based technology being used or we'll have see a move to digital over the next decade who knows but I think that the key thing is is that people need to be made aware of what are in the cards what's important um to to know and you know we know that many many caregivers um probably don't know or understand half the stuff that's in the cards because some of them are 60 70 pages long so you know we need to, we need countries to think about what is important to them what do they monitor and then um, what interventions can they provide to people uh, thank you Laura Rich Um I was just asked we're going to ask Greta if you could pop up the uh slide I want to take this opportunity to make a direct uh uh connection to those outcomes with the the current work we're doing. Um so we are working right now on this user centered implementation guide, a kind of workbook to help people plan, design, implement, monitor and evaluate their home based records uh to help them um make those contextual decisions that they uh that they can. Um and uh so as we're developing this user centered implementation guide we need some policy makers and program managers who are directly involved with home based records in their countries to help test our ideas um during the development of this so if you are interested any of you on this call today are interested and feel like oh yes i have been involved with home based records in a decision making or having to do the work context please con- contact us um or if you know specific individuals that you work with um if you can uh, connect us to those people would be very helpful because we do want to be user centered as we uh create this guide to to talk the talk as we as we like to say so if you have ideas of yourself or others who would be good to test this guide as we're developing it please email me directly at rich@fuseforesight.com thank you very much 
That's great. Thank you so much, uh, Rich. We'll be sharing those details with uh, uh, the participants in the WHO uh, IA 2030 uh, course. And we have a number of research collaborations and uh, partnerships. So we'd be happy to, to discuss that further. That's it uh, for today. Thank you so much, uh, Laura. It's really good to have you back. Please do come again. <laughs> and uh, uh, Charlotte, and also to participants, uh, great, uh, great questions. So obviously, a lot of uh, experience uh, being shared here. And I think that's, I believe, that's one of the Part of the, one of the points made by Immunization Agenda 2030, you can find out for yourself by going to the IA2030 website. That's immunizationagenda2030.org. Thank you and uh, goodbye. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.